Well, welcome back, folks. Today we're going to continue on with the work on the Suzuki TS50 engine. Today we're going to replace the uh, lower end oil seals on the engine. You can see I replaced the sheet of cardboard on the workbench top here. I do that two or three times a year, and since we've got a nice clean engine, I want to start with a nice clean sheet of corrugated. I save all my corrugated from my larger boxes that I accumulate, and uh, when the, the old one, the old sheet gets a little contaminated with oil and gets tore up, I just replace it like you see here. And uh, it also protects the top of the workbench, provides a little bit of padding. It's a great oil absorber, etc. So that's been replaced. I have all the new seals aligned here along the bottom here in the shot. We'll come back to those in a minute. Over here in the upper right, I'm pointing to are the seals for the opposite or right side of the engine, the right crank uh, shaft seal, etc. We're not going to be talking about those or dealing with those today. We'll deal with those on an upcoming video. In terms of the engine itself, uh, I did thoroughly clean this engine uh, some time ago, a couple of weeks ago already. What I did is I put it up in my parts cleaning tank, and which has an adjustable spout. And I hosed down the engine really well and just let the um, circulating pump run and uh, ran the cleaning fluid all over the engine cases as well as on the opposite side I could direct the flow into the lower end into the transmission. The reason I did that is I want to flush out any residual oil and sediment that might have settled out in the transmission oil over the years. Most of us have seen that sediment that does accumulate in oil that sat. I want to flush all that out really well. I then let the engine drain in the parts tank for uh, probably 24 hours or so. Then I, I used uh, a green scrubby pot scrubber right here. This is These are plastic, by the way. I used this green uh, pot scrubber, or part of this, I didn't actually use this one, but I cut a piece off of this along with a brass brush, which is soft. I scrubbed the outside of the cases really well as best I could, all, uh, you know, flipped it over to the bottom, to the top, front and back. Again, I rinsed it in the parts tank, uh, hose off, and wash away all the debris. Then I took the engine outside on my wagon, which you've seen me use before for various projects, and I flushed it really well with a uh, carburetor cleaner, or rather I should say brake cleaner. Flushed it really well to get it nice and clean and flush off any residuals, uh, oils from the uh, cleaning process and the parts tank. That's a petroleum-based product I use in my parts cleaner, as well as the transmission. Let it uh, dry outside for a little bit. It's cold out there. It's, it's dead of winter here when I'm uh, shooting this video. So I did bring the engine back inside and let it dry out for uh, actually a couple of days. And you can see it's finished condition here. So today we're not going to deal with the right side seals. We're only going to deal with these four. The left uh, crankshaft seal, which is here. This is new. It's a new part. Still available from Suzuki. These are all new from Suzuki. Left crank, uh, clutch push rod seal right here. We got the gear shift right here. This is where the gear shift shaft uh, troops through the engine. We're going to replace that seal as well as the counter shaft sprocket seal right here I'm pointing to. This is where the sprocket fits, the drive sprocket that the chain goes around. So those are the four seals we're going to deal with today. Now normally uh, if I'd split the engine I would replace these while the engine is still split. It's a little easier that way but certainly we can do it in situ or in position like you see here. We'll have to pull each one of these seals out one by one and then uh, install the new ones. I'll start with uh, probably here the left crankshaft seal and then just work my way along the engine. So I'm going to have to reset up here a little bit for that and uh, show you the tools I'm going to use and the process I'm going to use and then we'll begin to replace all these seals. Change my setup here a little bit and we're going to talk about first tools and techniques for seal removal and installation. We're going to talk about the uh, techniques first 
because the technique you choose or use will influence the tools that you'll have to have on hand. Now typically, if this engine had been split and this crankshaft was not in installed as you see it right here, in other words, the opening the inside of this seal right here, this crankshaft seal was open like you see the new one right here. Usually I wanted to use something like a seal puller, that's what you see right here. And the way these are used, and you probably have seen me demonstrate these in the past, I've used um, this tool many times. You simply insert the tool inside of the opening of the seal like that and you hook the back edge. I think you can probably see that right there. You hook the back edge and then you, you lever it out, bearing against usually the case in this um, particular instance. You probably end up protecting this with a piece of wood or some duct tape or something so you don't mar your case. But you literally just lever this right out by pulling it out. Now I can't do that in this situation obviously because I didn't split the cases so I can't get this tool inside of there to lever it out. So I have to use an alternative method. Now the most common method and probably the, the only really viable way to do that is you would insert or I will insert two screws into the seal here and here for instance. You drive two screws in and then you will take like a locking plier. This just happens to be otherwise called a vice grip. This is no vice grip brand but um, you know, locking plier, and you grab a hold of those screws and you just pull that uh, seal out. You'd work your way, normally you'd work your way back and forth from side to side and then pop the seal out. That's uh, the most common way of doing it. You'll see versions of that on YouTube. There's a lot of videos on YouTube, by the way, about how to remove seals with that type of technique. Many of them are very good, by the way. Um, but they all really use a, a version of the, of the screw. Um, here's a couple of different sizes that I just pulled out of some of my inventory. I prefer a very aggressive thread. You can see on these these uh, screws, that's a very aggressive thread versus a shallow thread and a larger shank. That's just my preference. I want to get as much of a bite with these threads as I possibly can. So I just went through my screw inventory and dug a few different sizes out here for um, use in this project. And in order to do that, what I usually do is I will pre-drill a pilot hole on each side of the seal uh, that will allow me to start the screw in. Again, if you watch some of the YouTube videos, some people don't do that. They just hammer the screw in through the, the rubber or vinyl face, whatever the compound is, right into the, the seal. I prefer to pre-drill it. I just think it's a little bit more uh, elegant that way than just hammering the screw in. Now you have to keep in mind that behind this seal, in this case anyway, there is a bearing. The uh, crankshaft bearing is right behind that seal, so if you get carried away and start drilling too aggressively or hammering these screws in too aggressively, you can go right into that bearing. Now admittedly that bearing is uh, high quality steel, hardened steel, and the likelihood of this uh, inexpensive screw damaging the bearing is relatively low but I don't want to take that chance to be honest with you I just I'm not going to do it that way now what some people will uh, demonstrate and in some cases um, if if it's not hollow behind there and you've got um, part of a case for instance that that uh, that uh, bearing doesn't fit into or there's not a bearing there but there's rather there's metal behind there you can use those screws by driving them in to jack that uh, seal out. I've seen that done. That it will not. I'm not going to use that technique here because I'd have to jack against the bearing, and I've already talked about why I wouldn't do that. But you can actually jack out the seal. I wouldn't do it if it was an aluminum or an alloy case like this because you you stand a good chance of damaging the alloy, the metal behind there with the tip of that very sharp screw. Rather than use this tool, which we already talked about isn't going to work, and I'm not going to use a locking plier, what I'm going to attempt to use is my slide hammer. 
Now this might be a little bit overkill admittedly for this, uh, this uh, project, but again, I'll put the screws in and then I'll use the slide hammer. I'll clamp onto the screw with the slide hammer. Let me see if I can get that like that. And then I will use the slide hammer to work the seal out. And I'll probably end up working back and forth from side to side. That's the basic technique I'm going to use with the slide hammer. Uh, an option might be using a high quality hardened, this is a 90 degree, um, it's essentially a pick, but what it's sold as, this is a very good quality tool by the way, this is a wild tool company, they're made in the U.S. They make great punches and drifts, tools like this. What you perhaps could do is drill a hole in the seal, in the face of the seal, and put this in and lever it out. That might be an option. I'm not going to do that, but that might be a solution, I, I suppose. I've never done it that way exactly. This is really sold as a cotter pin puller, and that is you hook it through the, the loop of a cotter pin and just pull the cotter pin out. They work, they work great for that, but I'm not going to use that technique. What I'm going to do is pre-drill two holes here. I'm going to use, uh, I'll probably use the longer screws and I'll put them in like that and that and then I'll use the slide hammer to pull this seal right out. That's the plan. I have a fresh uh, drill bit chucked up in my drill. Uh, these are high quality American made drills. These are not El Cheapos that you would buy uh, at any hardware store. Um, these are top quality drills. I've had very good luck with them. They're not much more expensive than the inexpensive or cheap ones you can buy. And I have my drill uh, set on low speed right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this drill and on each side of this seal, use this as a model, get up here close for you I think and you can see it. I'm going to drill in at a slight angle like that on one side and then on the other side like that so that I can then insert these two screws and then pull that seal out. So I've got my two screws installed. I'm just going to connect my puller here. Give me if my head gets or anything gets in the way here. See the seal probably where from your perspective I hope is starting to move. And there is the seal. We got it out okay. And you can now see, I think, the bearing back there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just make sure that's clean and no debris got in there. I'll, I'll brush it out a little bit and vacuum it out. And then we'll talk about reinstalling them. I made sure everything's nice and clean in there. There wasn't really any debris to speak of or anything, but I did wipe it out good. Uh, I did put a little uh, shot of WD-40 in there on the bearing just to lubricate it. It's nice and smooth, as you can see there. So I think that's ready to go and receive the uh, new seal, which you can see right there. This is again that brand new seal from Suzuki. Now you can buy seal drivers. I don't have a seal driver set. I've always been meaning to buy one, but I just haven't gotten around to it. What I usually use is a piece of PVC or pipe. You can use black pipe as well. 
Uh, this I've had around for a long, long time, and it just happens to fit that seal almost perfectly. So I'm going to use this piece of PVC. Wish I had a cap on it, but I don't. I could run down to the hardware store and get one, but I think I can work around that. That is the missing cap. But I'm going to use this piece of PVC to drive that, that seal on to that crankshaft. Now to prepare everything for that, I'm going to put a little, just a three-in-one oil. You can use any oil. It doesn't make any difference. I'm going to lubricate this shaft up really well so that as those inner edges or what they call the lips inside here of the seal slide over that shaft, it's lubricated and they don't go on dry. I don't think they did that at the factory, but that's what I have always done. You could probably use a little grease. It doesn't really make any difference as long as you have some lubrication on the shaft and or on the inside lips of the seal. In terms of the outside edge, that is this contact surface right here where it connects or uh, contacts the case. What I often do, I don't always do it, it depends on my mood, but quite often I'll use this form gasket um, compound. Let me see if I can get this top off of here. I'll use this form gasket. This is really, really good stuff, by the way. I don't use it often, but when I do need it, it's almost indispensable. What I think I'm going to do is take a, a paintbrush and just go put a thin line all the way around the seal here of this form of gasket. I'm not going to overdo it. Again, just a thin little strip all the way around so that it makes sure it seals when it goes into the case. One other thing you want to pay attention to, and you need to do this before you remove the seal, not after, is the positioning that is in and out this way of the seal in relationship to the case. Now, I did pay attention in this uh, original seal, just sat flush right here. And I know you can't see it from your perspective, but you can see the mark on the crankshaft where it, it, it uh, bore against the inside lips of the seal. But my, my intent is to just seat this seal so that it is flush here around this case. And as I work my way along, I'll do the same thing on each one of these other seals. Now, on one of these seals, I think it was this one. This is the push rod seal I'm pointing to right now. Um, that actually isn't sitting square. It's sitting just a little bit cocked like that, just ever so slightly. You probably can't see it from your perspective. But when they installed that at the factory, they didn't quite get it square. And... Um, so I'm sitting like that since 1972 or 73 when this when this uh, engine was first assembled because I don't think it's, this has ever been a part. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go wash my hands and then I'm going to uh, go ahead and put a little light oil, that 3-in-1 oil on the shaft, probably a little bit on the inner circumference here, the lips of the seal. Uh, put a little bit of this uh, form gasket around this outer edge, and then we're going to go ahead and put the seal back into the case. Now, I'm not going to show every single step, but I will show you what I think is the important steps that you need. You'll need a little light 3 in 1 oil on the shaft, got the inner lips of the seal, a little oil on those, and of course the gasket maker that I just talked about. So we're just going to get that started on. Again, the orientation of this seal does not make any difference. So what I'm going to do right now is take my seal driver, and I hope uh, I don't get my head in the way of this. Just take your time, keep an eye on the seal, how it's going in, whether it's not going in square or not, and adjust your technique accordingly. I think I'm going to switch sides. You can see here that I had relieved, I had relieved that sometime in the past on my lathe reason I'm doing this is I want this 
this end to sit against that case, which I think it's going to do, and just level that seal. And I think we're done. I think we've got the seal nice and flush all the way around with the engine case. See a little bit of that uh, forming gasket squeegeed out, which is okay. I'll take a little uh, carburetor cleaner or something similar on a clean rag and I'll just wipe that off. But I think, uh, I think we've got that seal now installed. I'll just clean it up a bit. So now I'm going to go ahead and use the same technique to remove these three seals. Now this one, this small um, clutch push rod seal, um, might be a little trickier to use uh, this type of technique. That is the one I just demonstrated with the screws and pulling it with slight hand. It might be overkill. What I can probably do is get in there with a small screwdriver or something like this, get up underneath it and just lever it out. But let me finish cleaning this one up and then um, I'll come back to these other three seals. And I'm not going to talk you through everything on these other three seals because it'd be redundant what we just talked about, but I will show you as I progress along me working on the three different seals. For the small clutch push rod seal, as I just talked about, I think I'm gonna go ahead and use this pick. Uh, you can see I protected the edge here. That's where I'm gonna lever against like this from damage, because this is a soft alloy after all. And this is hardened steel. And I think I can just go in here and hook back side that seal and just pull it right out like that and I'm going to go ahead now and insert I'll clean this up a little bit but I'm going to use the same technique I just used on the uh, crankshaft seal clean this up put a little bit of that form a gasket around the new seal uh, let's see where is that new seal right here there's the new seal, and uh, I'll have to find a socket or something that will fit this, and I'm just going to tap it in. I've got the new seal prepared. Again, I get the same technique. I got a little thin coat of that gasket sealer around the outside edge. I've cleaned this out. It's nice and dry. I did find a socket that is just about perfect in size. This is the old seal that will go like that as a driver. And again, this socket, the original socket. Even though it was a little bit at an angle, did fit flush or supposed to fit flush. In fact, I can just push that in with my finger like that. I don't even need the socket. Like that. So that's, uh, that's all installed, didn't even need to use a socket. Sometimes that happens, you never know, smaller uh, seals especially. So I'll clean this one up a little bit because I had a little bit of that squeegee effect again, then we're going to move on. This one I will remove in the same, using the same technique I did for the crankshaft seal. This is a countershaft sprocket. There is a bushing in here, you can see right there. So I'll just take that out for now. And uh, again, I'm not going to talk you through all of that because you've seen it, but I am going to pop that out using screws.
So there you have it, folks. We've replaced all four of the seals on the left side of the engine. Crankshaft, clutch push rod, counter shaft or sprocket output shaft from the transmission, and the shift shaft right here at the bottom. That uh, shift shaft, that was a little bit of a bugger to get out because of that long shaft that sticks out. It's difficult to get in there with the drill and not damage the shaft or anything. So I had to fool around a little bit with that. But uh, we did get it done and uh, went about as I would have expected. Uh, so those seals are all done. The right side of the engine is quite a bit different. Let me turn it around for you. Because of the design, because of the nature, you know, we've got the, right now I have it out, but I have the rotor valve that will fit in here with a couple of seals that are going to be much easier to put in, um, much less involved than the left side. Again, here's, by the way, the original seals I pulled out with the original uh, Suzuki packaging. I didn't mention it before, but you can buy aftermarket seals. I'm sure these are, I didn't really pay a lot of attention, but these are probably a standard metric dimension seals. Most seals are metric, in fact. Uh, I could probably have gone down to a local uh, bearing and seal supplier and picked up the same seals. If you do that, uh, make sure you get good quality seals. I only buy European made, Japanese made, or North American made seals. I won't buy any other seals made anywhere else. European, Japanese, and North American made, period. I bought uh, the original Suzuki seals, uh, probably paid a little more than I had to because they are, they are OEM quality seals, but I know what I'm getting. I know they'll fit, and I know the quality. In fact, the brands, if you look at the brands on these, um, this one doesn't have a, a brand on it. This one does. This is the NCK right there, I think. And the, uh, the new one I put in was the same brand. So um, anyway, I diverted a little bit from my topic. The right side, we'll, we'll talk about it in a different video, a different time. We've got the left side done. So I think we've accomplished what we set out to do in this video, folks. Any issues, questions, thoughts, drop me a note. Otherwise, as usual, Thanks for watching.